What's going on everybody? It's the IT guy here again with another video for you. So in this video I wanted to show you how you can reset your Synology NAS. Uh, there are three ways to reset your Synology NAS. The first is to reset just the administrator password and the network settings. The second way is reinstalling DSM without data loss and the third one is a complete wipe of the Synology uh, NAS. So let's start with the first one. So first way of resetting the Synology NAS is by using the hardware switches on the back of the Synology. To do that, we have to flip over the Synology NAS to its back. And right on the back, you can see that there is a word written on the left side and that is reset. So there is a button next to the Ethernet port over here. It might be somewhere else on your NAS. And we have to press this button for four seconds to reset the Synology NAS to its factory defaults. Well, not really the factory defaults. So we'll have to press it for four seconds the first time and that will reset the administrator password and the network settings of the Synology NAS. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to use a pin over here. So you're going to need to press the pin for four seconds in the Synology NAS. And after you've uh, pressed it for four seconds, you will hear a beep. And that means that the first reset, the smallest reset, let's call it the smallest reset, has been performed. And the administrator password and the network settings have been reset to their factory default states. So now you hear a small beep and that means that the reset has been performed and now we'll have to wait for the Synology to boot up again and you'll be able to log in to the Synology uh, and choose a new administrator password once you have uh, logged in via the uh, web interface. So a second way to reset the Synology NAS is by reinstalling the DSM operating system. DSM operating system is the firmware or the operating system that runs on the Synology NAS. Reinstalling DSM implies that all the applications that were installed, all the configurations you made uh, will all be deleted. The only thing that will be kept in this case is the data. So all the users will be gone, all the configurations will be gone and also all the settings that you applied in the configuration screen or anything like that will all be gone. So to do that, to reset the Synology to its uh, factory default by reinstalling the DSM software, you will have to press the reset button again for four seconds. And once you hear the beep, release the button and immediately press it again for four seconds. And afterwards you'll hear another beep uh, beeping sound and uh, that means that the DSM reset has been performed and that the DSM is being reinstalled at this very moment. So after that's done uh, you'll have to wait for a couple of minutes and then we'll log back into the DSM via the web interface. So right now the LEDs on the Synology NAS are going to blink like crazy. Uh, once the NAS is ready to be reinstalled, the orange LED should be blinking. So once that's done, we can log in with the DSM web interface. So now we've done a full reset on the Synology NAS. We need to reinstall the operating system. So to do that, we just have to open up our web browser and go over to the following website find.synology.com is the website and in this website it will start searching for uh, Synology NASs in your LAN so in your local network and right over here we can see this is my DS412 plus the IP address the MAC address and then the status is configuration lost so uh, configuration lost is the so the orange uh, LED you would see blinking is actually just to signal that the Synology is working but the configuration is lost so we need to reconfigure the Synology in its entirety so just go ahead and click connect and go through this license agreement thing and we'll start loading as you can see our URL has changed to the IP address of the NAS and the port 5000 which is the uh, port for the web UI so welcome back 
reinstall just go ahead and click that just go ahead and click install now and just go ahead uh, just just wait until the this station manager has been reinstalled so this will take approximately 10 minutes depending on the speed of the NAS if you have like a one bay NAS uh, the, 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 the basic uh, models for home users then it will probably take around 10 minutes but if you have something like me uh, say four bay with a better processor and a bit more memory that will not take 10 minutes it will take a bit less so just wait until this is completely completed over to 100% and then let's just go ahead and reinstall everything. So here we are, the NAS has restarted and we are in the create your administrator account window. So this is actually the window that will allow you to uh, create your Synology NAS just the way you did it, uh, create your Synology NAS account uh, just the way you did it when you first bought it. So you just have to enter a server name and a server name is just like a, just like a computer name. You just name it something. I'm going to name this one. Uh, let's see here. Uh, disk station. Station. Uh, let's just name it disk station. I don't care. Uh, and then username, IT guy, password. Let's just enter something temporarily. All right. So uh, okay. So let's just let's just add this there. So we just have entered the server name, the username, and the password and the confirmation. And just make sure that the password is a strong password so it can't be hacked easily. Uh, next, let's just go click next. All right, so now it's asking us for the DSM update and maintenance. Let's just say we only want to install the important updates and uh, let's schedule them on a Sunday. All right. At, uh, let's just say 1 a.m. Okay. And these two can remain checked because it's very important for your Synology NAS to detect any uh, bad sectors or any smart errors. So leave that check. That's good for drive health. Just go ahead and click next. Okay, so now it's asking us for a quick connect ID. I do not use quick connect because uh, I don't want my data to be exposed like that to the internet via a, uh, a no, I don't trust really the Quick Connect ID, the Synology account thing. I don't really trust it, so I just skip it always. You can do so if you know if you don't have any important data on there, and it's just to, you know to share uh, like pictures with your family, and you don't care that they are exposed to the internet. You can go ahead and uh, set up a Synology Quick Connect ID, but I don't use it, so I'm gonna skip it. So over here, it's gonna ask us to uh, install these packages, all kinds of pre-configured, uh, uh, let's just say it's a pre-configured uh, total package, but you can install all of these applications individually and that's exactly what I'm going to do because I don't need things like audio station or I don't need moments or video station. I'm probably just going to use the media server, the download station, the hyper backup. So I'm going to skip this step uh, and afterwards we can, we can always install the necessary packages manually from the package manager. So just go ahead and skip this step or if you want all of them you can go go ahead and click next. So you're all set, perfect. So share my Synology's device network location to allow it to locate via find.synology.com. If you check this then you'll be able to find it always uh, via the find.synology.com URL. So just go ahead and click go. All right. So over here, it's asking you to share some analytics. Um, you know, if it helps the developers to uh, improve the product, I always send over the analytics. So I just go ahead and click yes, if, if you don't really care about that, and then just uh, take the box and click okay. 
and then we have the Synology completely reset to factory defaults. So another way to erase all the settings and what whatnot from the uh, Synology disk station is by doing a complete wipe. So uh, let's just uh, for you know to to give you a little bit of insight what the difference is. is I'm going to open the Windows settings over here and I'm going to go over to the recovery uh, menu here. So basically the first two options like there is the first option is a soft reset which just basically resets the passwords of the administrator account and the network settings the second one is a complete reinstallation of the dsm so a reinstallation of the uh, firmware that is installed or the operating system that runs the synology nas so the synology nas runs on the dsm but the dsm is just being reinstalled uh, but the data on the Synology NAS is not touched. So all the volumes are, are kept, all the shared folders, all the files, all the permissions in the folders are kept. So there is nothing else uh, being deleted or removed or, or, or changed to the data. But the DSM, so it's fir the firmware is being reinstalled. Kind of look at it like, um, let's just say you reinstall your Android phone or you reset your Android phone uh, but the SD card in there is not erased you know that's kind of something you can take that as a uh, as an example like that's basically the same thing it's just a reinstallation of the operating system you know I don't know if this all makes sense but basically that's just what it means and the same goes with uh, the Windows recovery so you can also choose to keep the files so the files so um, Windows will reinstall itself, but it will keep all the data that is on the hard drives. Or the second option is remove everything, which will, as it says, remove all of your personal files, apps and settings. And that's basically the last thing. If you really want to uh, re, let's just say, reconfigure or recycle or give this Synology to someone else, or you want to sell it and you really want it to be empty and you want all your files to be of the drives that is the option you go for in this case so we are going to do that because i know this uh, i know this uh drive is full of data of mine but it's all outdated and uh, you know for the sake of this video i will do this for you guys i will erase my complete drive uh my complete synology drive for you guys so you can see how you do that so let's go to the control panel first I assume that you already know how to log into the Synology Disk Station I showed you before. So, uh, so when we are in the control panel, uh, you first might end up in the basic mode. Uh, so you might see this or you might see this. Anyway, the update and restore is the option we need. Over here, we click it. And then to the most right, this tab over here, you have reset. And over here, this is the option we need. You can restore your disk station to its original manufacturer settings. All user data stored on the drives will be erased and the entire system will be restored to default settings. Uh, this is actually the, the final boss of resets on the Synology. This will erase everything. Of course, you need to you know keep in mind that everything is uh, re really erasing everything. There's always gonna be something on the drives which will be overwritten afterwards, but in the disk station the drives will be empty so what i want to say with this what i what i mean with this is if you want to give it to somebody else and you want to be sure that there are no files on there if they use something like file recovery software they might be able to recover uh the data on the drives so you know just a bit of a warning so just go ahead and click this big red button over here erase all data you will get this warning over here you have to tick this box and then uh, wait five seconds and then the button will become visible and then you have to make one final click and there we go you have to enter the enter the password over here it's already entered uh, in my case and just click submit and off we go so now this process will take a while uh, so you know go get a cup of coffee or go for a walk because this might take up to like 10 minutes or so okay so 
Now the process is completed, the Synology will beep once it's uh, completely booted up, and then we have to visit the trusty find.synology.com website. Uh, I forgot to mention this before, but there is, uh, if you go to the Synology, if you go to the Synology website and you go over to support and download center, you can, uh, let's just see, this is the 4B, the TS412, uh, where is it? Oh, here. So, uh, Synology Assistant, so this is actually the Synology Web Assistant, so this works in your browser, but you might remember previously we enabled an option that allowed us to find the Synology Disk Station with this Web Assistant. If the Web Assistant, if the Web Assistant does not find the Synology Disk Station, you can download the Synology Assistant over here. You can save it and then run this bad boy and it will basically do the same so quickly I'll quickly show you this only takes like a minute or so uh, just quickly run it allow and just wait a few seconds and then you'll see that the Synology will appear in this list as well oh but it's not able to find maybe I, maybe if I run it as an administrator There we go. Okay, so <laughs> that's basically it. So if the Synology Assistant doesn't work, just quickly run it as an administrator. So this is actually an option for offline installation. So if you if you do not have internet access at the place you're at right now, but you do have internet access somewhere else and you want to download the DSM software from the Synology website, you can do so by going to their website, entering your uh, disk station model and afterwards you can put that on a stick and just open that file up from the Synology Assistant. So that's a way to install the DSM again if you are offline otherwise you can just click connect and then it will redirect you to the web browser from where you can continue the installation using an internet connection. So yeah, there's nothing more to it. Now we are in the Web Assistant and we can start the process of reinstalling the Disk Station Manager from the beginning, like I showed you before. I'm not going to go over those over those steps uh, again because you know you can always rewind this video and watch that again. So I hope this video helped you out, guys. And if it did, you know what to do. Please leave a like and a comment. And if you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.